this video, I'll show how you can create a RAM editor within Ocarina of Time without doing any hacking, using only glitches. Something like this was technically already possible through arbitrary code execution, but this new method is actually doable by humans and doesn't require writing any custom code. The idea for this comes from Mr. Cheese, Save State, Natalia Has Died, Blinny, and others in the OOT Discord, whose names I'll try and list below. I'm just documenting the things they've found. Also worth noting is that this video is gameplay from the vanilla game running on the Wii U Virtual Console, which is one of the reasons that the picture looks so washed out. A few factors come together to make this the only version on which this trick currently works, though that may change in the future. As always, the early draft of glitches like this doesn't necessarily resemble the final product. So, I've edited this footage to keep the important parts while removing all of my mistakes, and there were a lot of those, uh, in order to keep the video length reasonable. This means that this probably won't be uh, great footage to learn the trick from, because I've cut out a lot of stuff, but I will include a full text write-up of the procedure in the description, and that will include links to actual competent videos for the individual setups. So. Let's take a look here. We're going to start by entering a specific file name, and that's going to be useful uh, when we do SRM, which is a memory manipulation glitch. So to begin, we'll watch the intro, we'll get the sword, we're going to go and collect some rupees, including all of the permanent rupees um, in Kokiri Forest, and we just need to get up to 55 total and then we can go here, purchase shield and deku nuts, and then we can do SRM, uh, which involves beginning with a heap setup, which is just a way of loading and unloading actors in memory in a specific order to set things up how we want. So you can see I'm passing through the load plane here in Kokiri Forest to where the deku tree is back and forth a few times doing very specific activities to arrange things the way that I need them. And then once that setup is done, and that setup will appear three more times, uh, again in heavily edited ways. So we're going to come all the way back to the crawl space here use this sign to cause the camera to lock. And then we'll go down here and grab the rock that we'll be using for SRM. Uh, if you've seen in any percent um, since SRM was discovered, then you would have seen this method. This should be familiar. We're going to take this rock over to the loading plane to where the Deku Tree is. And with the rock unloaded in our hands, we're going to get a specific angle and drop the rock. And the effect of doing that is that we have modified certain data uh, that is used by the file select screen when we create files. The reason for that is that in order to do the glitch that we want to do, there's a certain file name that we would love to type because it corresponds to certain hex characters. We're not actually able to type the file name that we need, uh, but we can get around that restriction by doing this. So what we're going to do now is die and go back to file select. And we're going to type basically the closest that we can get to the file name that we need into file 3. And the effect of that SRM that we just did will be that when we create this third file here, what it's going to do is its file name will get copied into the um, some event flags in the game. And 
because it's in a region that's flags, it's in a region where we can manipulate it. So we're actually able to set a single flag and turn this file name, which is not quite the one we want, into exactly the one that we want. So we're going to load back into the game. Um, you'll know that that SRM worked if uh, Saria greets you again, which normally when you're, you know, when you've saved and reloaded, she wouldn't. Uh, but in this case, because of the uh, shenanigans we pulled, she does. So in order to set that single flag that we need, we're going to go up here and talk to Fado. And so now that region in memory where we copied the file 3 name has exactly the values that we want it to have. So now we're just going to do SRM again. So this is the same setup uh, that I did before. Killing that Baba wasn't important there, that was just sort of a mistake, but it doesn't actually matter. So, same heap setup as before. Now we, after we pass through this load plane, we go back to the crawl space, we grab the rock again, do everything same as before. So with the camera locked, we walk the rock back over to that load plane. Uh, now we're going to get a different angle than before. And now you see that when we pass through that load plane, this happens. So what we've done is we've replaced the function that would normally be drawing all of the textures that are currently missing with the function that runs the flag editor. Uh, the uh, flag editor or event editor is uh, something that's left over from development and it basically allows you to edit event flags in the game which probably sounds incredibly strong and like something you'd want to be able to do in a speedrun and it is but we're actually going to go a step further with it so you can see right now I'm was setting up certain values uh, in the flag editor there and what I've done is those values uh, that I wrote the, f the file 3 name to that we just used for SRM to get this thing started, uh, I changed those to something else. So now we're going to do that same SRM over again, but now there are different values sitting there. And what they're going to end up doing is we're going to change where the flag editor is writing, uh, where it reads and writes its data from. And in order to in order to get full control over that, we're going to need to do this SRM twice, um, because as you can see, there are uh, 16 bits on screen there, which is two bytes. So in order to uh, be able to specify a four byte pointer, we have to basically hijack two of these um, little segments of the editor here. So in that SRM I did just there, the name uh, that was in inf table 2 changed. That's how I knew I did it correctly. And now, again, we set a few slightly different values. We go and we do a third SRM. Now you can see that that name is again going to change. It's going to blank out this time. So now we've got it such that these uh, entries in the editor here, inf table 0 and inf table 1, what they control are where inf table 2, the one after them, writes. Which means that between the two of these, we can write uh, a pointer to any address that we want and then the uh, the third one of them is going to let us edit whatever data um, happens to be there. So in this case, 
I've written a pointer to where Link's tunic colors are. And now you see that I can manipulate uh, Link's tunic color. So of course there's all kinds of exciting stuff that we could imagine doing with this. You know, you could uh, write stuff right into your own inventory with it, right? But it turns out that even faster than that, uh, and more convenient than that, is if we can pull up the flag editor, why not just pull up the inventory editor, which is also a leftover from development. So we can just pull this up and uh, give ourselves whatever items we want with it, and then close it when we're done. So one final application that I thought I'd show of this. You can see that it does persist through loading zones, so we can take this to other places. And uh, one place that someone might be interested in in a speedrun, Dampe Heart Piece. We can actually edit memory such that the Dampe Heart Piece is guaranteed. So um, this is pretty exciting. Thank you for watching.